Welcome back to another riveting episode of Wanna Go Diving. That is your cue for some really exciting music chase. to take people scuba diving with us. Well, in order to get the funding to take people to scuba diving, the catch is we have to take influencers. We have yet to be successful at nabbing an influencer. Now, in my opinion, no doesn't mean no, it just means not now, unless of course you're in the context of a compromising situation, then no means no. In this particular situation, we have decided that instead of letting the channel just be stagnant and you guys not hear from us for forever while we wait and send out emails, Dan, do it with Dan, and while we get responses on live feeds, Dan, do it with Dan, and wait for someone like maybe Dan, do it with Dan, to say, hey dude, we'll go scuba diving with you. Cause it will be piss your pants funny, and it will be cool, and it will give your audience something new to look at. We thought we would come in and just have story time, because I'm a painter, I paint the ocean, that's why I scuba dive. And so we thought we would just fill in the gaps with a little painty painty action going on while we wait for Dan, do it with Dan, calling Dan, do it with Dan, to go scuba diving with us. So without further ado, let's dive right into this riveting, riveting story. No pun intended. It all started with a fish. I'm done telling stories now. <laughs> I'm done, that's the story, goodbye. channel and it's very controversial to talk about fishing but some of you are just gonna have to get over it. I grew up in the middle of the of cornfields and hog farms in the Midwest. There was no scuba diving. I didn't even know what it was. I can't remember not fishing. From the time I was in diapers I, my dad had me on a bank or in a boat fishing and I can't remember not thinking fish were beautiful. The iridescence and the glitter and the colors of a fish are just mesmerizing to me. I just couldn't get enough of them and the only way you could see them was to either go to an aquarium which we didn't have in the tiny little town I grew up in or you caught your own so you could see them and so that's what we did. Even when I got older and I was a teenager and all of my friends were more interested in kicking back a few and <laughs> lighten up a bowl, I was fishing, riding horses and fishing. That's what I wanted to do. I thought horses were beautiful and I thought the fish were even more beautiful. I didn't even get to see the ocean until I was an adult. I was in my 20s before I got to put my feet in the ocean and I was just blown away at that point. But even then, I only got into the water knee deep. And so it was a natural progression for me to think, okay, I've been fishing in lakes and creeks and rivers and streams my whole life. Now let's fish in the big blue. So I remember my first offshore experience getting out there after you pass the bay and you're really offshore and you can't see land and the water looks like molten cobalt glass and it is exquisite. So I do a lot of, I was doing a lot of offshore fishing whenever I could and when I um, met, met my husband I decided to take him offshore. Well for my 38 37th-ish birthday, he bought um, two tickets for us to go offshore together. And I was super excited because I've had this myth my whole life that somewhere in the Gulf Coast of Mexico, there is a Dorado with my name tattooed on his ass. Well, I no longer 
feel that way about fishing, but um, let me tell you a fishing story because this one tops every story I have fishing wise. So we go off 45 miles offshore. I don't know how far it was. It always feels like it takes forever to get out there. And there's an oil tanker out there anchored. So the boat captain decides we'll stop here and we'll fish. I had decided that that day I'd been fishing offshore for several years and I had never caught a draw and I really just wanted to see one. And so I was like, please, sweet Jesus, can I just catch a Dorado? Please let me catch a Dorado. I just want to see it. I won't let them gaff him. I just want to see the colors. I just, I want to see this fish because I want to paint this fish. So everybody's letting their lines out. We're all fishing on one side of the boat. I'm at the very back of the boat in the corner, prime location, perfect spot. It's exactly where I wanted to be. And I'm having a ball. It's beautiful. It's just gorgeous. I love being out there. So everybody starts hooking up immediately, catching fish, kingfish, shark, whatever. Everybody on the boat is catching fish but me. I let my line out, I get a bite, I reel up the line, and then just as I get to the boat, the fish that was on there takes the body of my bait and leaves me with the head of a bait fish. And so I'm like, hmm, okay. Everyone else down the entire line of the boat is catching fish. Me, I am not catching a damn thing. But I'm I'm talking to Jesus, and so I'm like, okay, that's cool, because you got, yeah, I, I know, we, we got a Dorado coming. I know this is what's happening. I'm getting a Dorado. So anyway, I let my line out again. My husband gets a bite, sets the hook, and he's reeling and reeling and reeling, and he pulls this fish, and my husband had never fished in the ocean before, y'all, you need to understand that. He pulls this fish in, and it's flopping on the deck, and he goes, what is that? And I look down, and it's a, mar a Dorado. I wanted to stab him in his forehead with the knife the deckhand had in his hand right then and there. Because I thought he was being a smart mouth. What kind of fish is this? It's a you're going overboard mf -er kind of fish. That's what it is. So he caught my Dorado. So at this point, I'm mad. I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's another one out there. I let my line out again, reel it back in. Nothing but a head of a bait fish again. Same thing. Everybody on the boat for an hour catching fish but me. At this point, I'm really mad. And I'm, I'm swearing while I'm trying to be like, okay, come on, come on, just give me that Dorado. I just want to see it. I, I want one for myself. Now I've seen one, but I, it's still not the same. I want one for myself. So the deck hand goes to bait my fish because they won't let you bait your own hook on the boat because it's a liability, even though I'm perfectly capable. So I grab the bait fish out of his hand as a big old mullet and I kiss it right on the face before I put it on the hook for good luck. Sorry, y'all got a contact bugging me. And I let the line out and I go back to being la la la, the clouds are so beautiful. And I'm thinking to myself about the color that I would put underneath the bottom of the cloud in order to paint what I'm looking at right now. And I get another bite. Okay, cool. So I start reeling and I'm reeling and the fish is really just like swimming right at me. And out of the corner of my eye, I see a sailfish come up out of the water. And I'm like, oh my God, calendar art. And I'm screaming, I'm still reeling and I'm screaming at everybody down the boat. Did you see that? Did you see that? It was so cool. And I'm thinking, okay, that's cooler than catching a Dorado. I got to see a sailfish jump out of the water for real. I'd never seen that before in my whole life except on TV. And so I'm still reeling and I'm thinking, man, I'm gonna catch a kingfish. And I saw a sailfish and today is awesome. And about the time that that happened, my line took a 90 degree turn and then went bam, bam, bam. Like, like really, like I had to hold on to it. I turned with the line. I thought, I'm I'm hung up on something because it's like really, really pulling. I mean, I mean really pulling, not like anything else I'd ever caught. And it f almost felt like a snag because it just, it felt, it just felt like a snag. Like I was hung up on something. And I remember grabbing the, the rod and pulling it into myself because I wasn't gonna let go of it and just being completely confused as to what was going on. And all of a sudden my line went from being in the water to being completely out of the water, and at the end of my line was that sailfish. Dancing across the water, waving its sail at me, like 200 yards out there or so. I don't quote me on that, okay? I'm a girl, I don't know how far anything is. When I realized that that fish was attached to my rod and my line that was in my hand, my legs started shaking uncontrollably and I damn near hyperventilated, for real. And then the demonic side of my personality came out. Yeah, you 
fucking lines out of the water. I got a sailfish on mine. Cause I'm thinking I have seen people not get their rods out and people get tangled up and then they, the deckhands have to cut everybody's line, which for one pisses me off cause the line is in the water. Two pisses me off because then you lose your fish, okay? So I'm thinking right then and there, so help me God. I pretty much said that out loud while I was praying to Jesus about getting to see the fish cause that's how it works in my world. That if these people don't get their lines out and I get tangled up and I lose this fish because of some schmuck that I'm on this boat with, somebody is going home with a knife sticking out of their forehead. Not a wound that will kill you, but a superficial wound that will remind you every time you look in the mirror that Rio was here. So the deckhand and I start making our way up and down this, this boat from stern to bow. And at this point, the captain of the ship orders everyone to not only get their lines in, but to take their rods out and go to the other side of the ship because we have a sailfish on and he's not getting loose because I've already been fighting this fish for 30 minutes, okay? So the captain decides he's going to give me a little help and he starts, you know, like driving to the fish and, and back. Well, in the course of doing that, I'm standing at the tip of the boat, which whatever it's called something. And I'm trying not to go over because the fish is just, is just at this point giving it all he's got and I'm giving it all I've got. And I told the deckhand, you better hang on to me, dude, because I am not letting go of this rod. I will go in the water if that's what it takes for me to see this fish. So. Anyway, about 45 minutes into it, I'm sitting down because this boat is not equipped for you to fight a fish like this. We're catching kingfish, y'all, okay? That's what we were supposed to be catching. So I don't have a harness, I don't have a chair, I have no way to anchor my legs in. So I have to sit down and anchor my arm into my own guts and hang on to this rod while it's going and, and, and wait so that I can then let go long enough to reel. It was quite a feat. I mean, it was quite a feat. So we got to a point in this where the fish would come to the boat and we would look at each other for just a, like not even enough time for my brain to make calculations on how to paint him and he would run again and he was out of the water and he was dancing everywhere and he was running again and I'd get him back up to the boat and he would then go about the time I thought okay it's over then he would go again we did this like 10 times and at one point I, I'm not going to admit that I said this but and I screamed, will you just give up? We're not gonna eat you. That was my, I might be para, no, I'm not paraphrasing. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> I feel shame. Long story very short, well, long story very long. We're on a party boat. So when the fish finally decides that he's had enough running and I have decided I've had enough fishing, they lower the deck hand off the side of the boat by his ankles and pull him and the fish out of the water. And they bring the most beautiful creature I have ever seen in my entire life onto this boat. And I am yelling at them, you better not hurt him. You better not hurt him. I just need a picture and he needs to go right back in the water. Even if I got to get in the water with him, he needs to go back in the water. So he was so big that it took three people to hold him. My husband goes to get his camera and at that point the bat batteries fail in our only camera that we had. So at the time, all he had was a little flip phone. So somewhere suspended in space is a thumbnail picture about this size of me standing in the middle of two dudes I don't know. And my fish hang is so big he's hanging off, off of the picture frame itself. He's not even all in the thumbnail. And I made eye contact with him and his eye was like this big. And it was the most beautiful blue color I've ever seen in my entire life. I didn't even know that color existed until I saw that fish. And the colors on his sail and the and the colors on his back that were that would flash when he when it would move in the in the sunlight. It, I was in awe. I couldn't even speak. And so I put my arm underneath him and I held up his fin because I wanted to see it, not because I needed some trophy. The spines in his in his sail were about as big, about as thick as my pinky finger. And the scales on his body were about the size of the end of my pinky finger nail. They were very small and very tightly wound together. And when I put my arm under, he took up this whole space here in my arm and I could feel the sting. I had rope burns and bloodied my arm from fighting him. And so the salt off his skin was burning me as I did this. But I remember standing there thinking to myself that 
not only was it the most amazing creature I'd ever seen, but that this was probably the first time this fish had ever felt the weight of his own body. And he was like seven and a half feet long, y'all. It was a big fish. And so we took him to the back just like that. They got down in the water um, off the back of the boat and hung out with him for a while. Once he was good to go, he was gone. He was gone like a, like a, like a fart in the wind. He was gone. And I stood there for the first time in my entire life going, I don't know what to do with my hands. I could not say anything. I did not want to fish for the first time in my life. How do you top that? How do you, how do you top catching a fish like that? How do you, how do you make the experience better than that? I kept thinking to myself, I kept asking myself the question, how do you one up this? How does it get better than this? Well, lo and behold, a few years later, I would have, I'd be turned on to the sport of scuba diving and I got my answer. That's how it gets better. Um, I'm nothing against fishing at all. I think done in a manner that conserves wildlife and protects them and um, isn't all about trophy hunting and things of that nature. I mean, let's face it, we eat fish. I am here to tell you that scuba diving is my new drug scuba diving is my jam that i can sit here right now and get the that ex same excitement telling you that i want to go diving versus telling you about how i caught that fish because being in the water and being in their living room and seeing them just run around and getting to understand their personalities and their characteristics is by far the most exhilarating thing I do besides pulling off an epic painting like the one behind me. So there's the story about how it all started with the fish and how I became a scuba diver and why I became a scuba diver. And there's lots more stories where this comes from. So Dan, Dan, do it with Dan. Come dive with us. You won't regret it. I promise you, you will not regret one minute of being in the water with us. And it'll give you something new to do, dude. And remember, take only memories, leave only bubbles, and kill only time. Until next time, we'll see you on the reef. Oh yeah, that's right. Until next time, you're going to see me sitting right here until somebody steps up and says, Hey, Rio and Sace, we want to go diving. Ciao! Yeah. Wait, 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 And remember, take only memories, leave only bubbles, and kill only. <laughs> Shut up, Sace. Okay, ready? <laughs> If you guys like the video, do us a favor. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Ring the bell so you get you so that you uh, get all the notifications. And if you don't mind, start hitting up your favorite YouTubers to check out our channel and tell them you want to see them go dive with us. I promise you, it is going to be an epic episode if we can get this thing pulled off. We'll leave. We'll leave. We'll leave a list. As, of YouTubers as well as their information in the, in the description so you can have a cheat sheet to work from. Oh yes, we want you to harass the hell out of them, okay? Twitter, Instagram, we want you on them because we need somebody to say, I want to go diving.